As usual, today we convened our sixth Green, green, green in Bezo and we were very honoured to host the um, new, uh, newly appointed Vice-Chancellor of the University of Cape Town. Today we're talking about skills development for a, for a new economy, recognising that more inclusive and much more sustainable skills development has to be at the core of that transition. South Africa faces very significant challenges in terms of um, youth unemployment, uh, environmental sustainability and so on. And the role of higher education institutions is absolutely critical. So having Professor Parkeng today talking to us about her vision for University of Cape Town, which is arguably the best university on the continent, is really important because she is essentially at the forefront of developing Africa's future leaders. And, and it was really good to hear from her, first of all, her personal journey of how she got there, because that's important, but also the role that she envisages a university like Cape Town will play in the broader society in building an inclusive um, economy. I'm one of those few babies who were born in a placenta. So I came out in a sack. This, this truth. Many people don't know. Apparently there's very few babies in the world who are born in a sack and I'm one of them. I was born on the 1st of November. If you are Catholic, you'd also know that the 1st of November is All Saints Day. I'm not Catholic, we're not Catholic, but I was born in a Catholic clinic um, in Istut um, at a time in 1966, the end of 1966. So it was at the time of the implementation of the Group Areas Act I was the only baby born in this clinic, Catholic clinic, and there I come in a sack, my mom says. And she says the sisters came in and they surrounded me and they prayed and they said to my mom, this is a special baby. So when I finished my, my master's, um, the, I mean, there was a professor who was, he was, she wasn't a professor at the time, but she was, she, there was something about her. She grabbed my attention, the way she interacted with us, the way she paid attention, the way she cared about us. You know, yeah. And sometimes someone makes you believe in yourself. Of course, yeah. Makes yeah. you see the things about yourself that you don't always see. Mm -hmm. And she did that for me. Mm -hmm. she, she opened the way for me. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you go to her, she, she, was, she was my supervisor, my, my, my mentor, mm -hmm. but she taught me how to be a mentor. She spoke about her father. He constantly said that failing was not part of your life. I'm not going to entertain it. So that for me spoke to a spirit of excellence. So she made it seem like anything is possible. The way she speaks, the way she conducts herself. And one of the things that stood out for me certainly, which I think I will carry probably for the rest of my career, is the fact that you shouldn't follow money. So don't make money moves, make career moves. We've been talking about transformation as it's about access, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and of course Max has done a lot of work in terms of access. The, the number of black students at UCT increased yeah. mm -hmm. with, with Max, uh, during Max's period. We talk also about employment equity when we talk about access, when it, because it's about access to jobs, we mm -hmm. need to hire more black academics. And some people would argue we've got more black academics at UCT now than we did 15 years ago. And my view is radical transformation is not just about access. Yeah. It's about access, but it's the big thing. It's about you've created this entry of pe to people. Now they are here, so what? Mm -hmm. That's not mm -hmm. success. That means nothing. Yes. If people come into the space, they feel alienated, marginalized, then, then yeah. we haven't done anything. Well, absolutely. Okay. You've just dealt with um, access. What she spoke about, about being the only black person in the space and being questioned about your accent, these are things that I've experienced. You know, you speak and people say, where did you study? You walk into a boardroom and you're the only person of color. Sometimes you're the only woman. So um, it's something that I've experienced and I could definitely relate. But her view on just doing what you're there to do is something that I thought was very important because sometimes we get sidetracked by our environment and feel that, you know, we're not welcome in the space, we can't function in it. But she's like, you know, put all that aside. The environment doesn't matter, just do what you're there to do. I was really, really inspired by the, by the speaker. I think one of the things she spoke about was uh, pursuing excellence uh, in a humble way, you know, not being afraid to, 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 to walk the talk and um, sort of embracing your background and, you know, stepping forward and trying to build a career uh, based on your passions, really. As people or as black people, 
were given access and it just stays there, then what after that? Um, I like what she said about we need to move further from just giving each other access and actually affording each other the participation space um, to be able to make that change wherever we are.